Hey everyone, this is John from MotionWorks.net. I've just been doing some lighting for the Iron Man helmet that I modeled recently in Cinema 4D. All of the texturing was done in Substance Painter, and I've imported the textures using the Substance Painter Live Link plugin, which I started using recently, which is very handy. But I'm doing all of the lighting in Redshift in Cinema 4D. And you can see I've got a render here. I just want to walk you through how I set this lighting up. So I've got the Redshift render view active. And at the moment I have none of the lights turned on, but you can see, we can see the eyes because the eyes have an emissive material applied. I added that inside of Substance Painter. Now it can be very tempting just to grab a dome light. And in this case here, I'm using HDRI Link from Grayscale Gorilla. So to grab that, launch the browser and just go through the different possibilities as far as HDRIs that you have with your HDRI link. Find something you like and render it out, but, but that's never going to give you as good a result as you can get by placing lights manually and customizing your lighting. I sometimes use HDRIs in conjunction with other lights, but I rarely, if ever, use only an HDRI to light an object. And in this case, I didn't use an HDRI at all. So I'm going to turn that off. The first light I used was an area light, and this is my key. I'm just going to turn that on. And you can see this is illuminating the front here. Let's take a look at the settings for this. So it's an area light, and it's a fairly large light, and I've just adjusted the spread. You can see if I decrease the spread amount, it goes quite sharp. I just brought that up to be fairly soft. So once the key was in, I added a fill. So that's basically a case of duplicating the key light and just naming it fill, turning that on. And what I like to do to position my lights is, first of all, I make sure that I lock the camera view. You can see I'm looking through this camera too. And then with the light selected, what I'll do is I'll come up to cameras and I'll choose set active object as camera. So now I'm going to be looking through that light. So now with my render view active, I can hold down the alt or option on Mac and the left mouse button. I can just zero in on that lighting position. You can see, I'll just drag it right over here now. And you can see it's so easy to get your lights in the right position. So that's the fill and the key. Next, I've got a backlight. Now I'm just going to bring number one underneath there. And obviously, the backlight is going to separate the object from the background, which is really important. Just turn that off again. You can see basically this side of the helmet just disappears into black. But with that light turned on, we start to cut that out. And once again, to position that, just coming up to cameras and choosing set active object and I can get that in the right position. I find this is the best way to position lights. I duplicated that light and once again these are all area lights and this one has been repositioned slightly. You can see it's increasing the amount of blue on this side but it's also adding a little bit of blue on this side. Which is, this is almost, I guess, like a halo light, which is cutting that out quite nicely from the background. Adding a little bit of blue down the side here as well, which is really nice around the eye. So what you're doing is you're sculpting with light. You don't want to just dump in a whole lot of lights and just move them all around. You want to do one light at a time because you might end up only needing one or two lights. So here, we've still got it fairly dark around this area, and it's still fairly dark around this area. But overall, it's starting to look quite good. Next, I've got this Fill 2. Let me just turn that on. So you can see Fill 2 is adding a little bit of illumination down here, because this is actually quite dark. If I'd have taken the Fill light and just moved it so it illuminated this section and this section, it gets quite flat. But by duplicating the fill light, 
and then repositioning it. So let me just choose set active object. I can just zero in on just the area that I want to add a little bit more light to. And obviously for each different light, I come in and adjust the settings. Some of them have diffuse turned off. Some of them only affect the specular. And also I can adjust the intensity here as well. But what I do like to do is use infinite lights and you could use area lights, I guess, just to catch the different bevels to make them pop out. So I've got one infinite light here and you can see it's just a little bit difficult to see. It's just catching this bevel here and just adding a little bit of illumination just down into this corner here as well. And you can see if I set active object and move that around, if I move it too far, it's going to start adding a, a hotspot. But these are really good lights if you position them correctly, just for catching the edges and making those bevels pop. Infinite lights are good because I don't have to worry about getting closer or further away to adjust the intensity of the light. All I have to do is think about rotating the light. Here's another one as well. You can see this one is catching this corner here of the eye. And it's also good to go through and turn the other lights off you can get a much better idea about what a light's doing. So viewing lights one at a time. There's that one there. Another infinite light. This one's just catching the brow here and conveniently just catching the chin area. If I turn these back on. It doesn't make sense to put this brighter hotspot in a darker area necessarily. I think this one works because this light's direction is potentially causing this bevel to be a little bit brighter. But you don't want to put bright bevels down in really dark areas. Just turn this one off again. Just as a little hot spot and just helps those bevels pop out. And it's also nice for this chin area. Just helps that pop out a little bit more. Just turn these all off again and come back to number four. So this one here is lighting up the eye area a bit. It probably doesn't need to light up the eye area. I'll take a look at that in a moment. But we're getting a nice little pop of light on this jaw area here and down here as well. So let me just turn these other ones back on. I just want to see if it makes a difference. We probably don't want to illuminate that area. You can hear the birds going past my window here. So what you can do, obviously, is you can use include or exclude. So I want to exclude these eye areas. So if I click on project, um, currently I'm excluding front. Just remove that. That's good because I don't want to illuminate that area. But I also want to exclude the eyes here. So if I come down to my geometry and I want to exclude eye mid it's better and eye inner that's better and I can exclude eye as well but it won't make a lot of difference with eye because that's this area here which has the emissive material on it and we have one more and that's just adding a bit of pop over here on this disc and I think up here as well yeah you can see it's just catching those edges there and this this one in particular which is really nice so it does take me a little bit of time to get my lighting right but it really pays to do lighting like this rather than just relying on an HDRI because this way you have full control over the position of the lights and what's being illuminated. And you can really use light to sculpt your object. And you can see here, I have this null number two, and I have this current camera 
camera two. And I've got all the lights in here as well. What I like to do is when I'm setting up lighting is use a camera and lights for each different pose. So if I just turn those off and come into number one, this is one I did earlier. So this is camera one. Just want to unlock here. And there's a the lighting I did for the different pose. Once again, you can see how I've used those infinite lights just to catch those edges up here, over here, right over here, and down in here. So hopefully that's been useful. I'm going to go ahead now and do all the other poses, and then I'll post my finished renders. But for now, this is John from Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.